Assalamu alaikum, it's time for a chit chat. Today let's talk about comparison and let's jump right into it. The Prophet وسلم, says in a hadith, انظروا إلى من أسفل منكم ولا تنظروا إلى من هو فوقكم فهو أجدر أن لا تزدر نعمة الله. Look at those below you, do not look at those above you, for it is better that you do not belittle the favors of Allah. Let's unpack this. Comparison can really impact our relationship with Allah because instead of looking at everything we have, from a lens of abundance, we end up looking at it from a lens of lacking and finding that thing that I don't have. Oh, there it is. I don't have that thing. Why don't I have that specific thing? And why does that other person have it? And so on. And we start to belittle the favors of Allah and everything else that Allah has blessed us with. So how can we change this perspective and try to shift our mindset into something more positive, inshallah? Especially now in the age of social media, it is easy to look at our lives and compare our lives to thousands of people out there and what we end up doing is looking at the least of our qualities and comparing it with the best of that person's qualities we take our worst and compare it to their best we see their outside and we compare it to our inside remind yourself that you are comparing your inside to their outside it is so skewed you are setting yourself up for disappointment because it's an unfair comparison to begin with that person in front of you might be happy and smiling and confident but perhaps behind closed doors they're crying and struggling and dealing with their own issues so remind yourself that everyone has their struggles you just don't see it so try to redirect your mindset to come from a place of compassion and kindness to others recognizing that they have their own issues that they're dealing with too and try to redirect that focus on the blessings that you do have so you don't belittle the favors of Allah and start not recognizing all the things that you do have Second of all, recognize that someone having some form of rizq does not have anything to do with your rizq. Allah has plenty of rizq to go around. It's not like there is a limited supply and therefore someone getting that supply of rizq, now it, it the inventory is out and it's out of stock and there's no more inventory and you don't get to have that same rizq. It doesn't work like that with Allah. Try to use what you see in others as a reminder to you of how generous Allah is and how capable he is. And the same way he is generous and capable with that person, he can be generous and capable with you too, of course. So try to turn it into a moment where you are actually praising Allah's kindness and generosity and capabilities. Third of all, understand that not having something is not necessarily a bad thing. Here's an example. The Prophet ﷺ could not read or write. Let's take a look at this ayah. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ إِذَا لَرْتَابَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ You... Meaning the Prophet ﷺ, you could not read any writing before this, nor could you write at all. Otherwise, the people of falsehood would have been suspicious. Let's dive into this a little bit more because there's lessons in this verse. The Prophet ﷺ could not read or write. And subhanAllah, there was wisdom behind that. If he was able to read or write, people could have very easily said, well, he read other books, he was writing, he probably maybe spent years putting together a book from different things that he read, and he started writing things, he made his own book, and then now he's revealing it to us. That was impossible for him to do, right? He couldn't do that. So that removed that suspicion there. People were still suspicious and said things, right? But there was no basis and no logic to that claim. So that was in his favor. There was wisdom behind the Prophet ﷺ not being able to read and write. There was wisdom, there was purpose behind it. So how does this apply to each one of us? Maybe, perhaps, that thing that we don't have, whether it's a physical thing or whether it is a certain quality, a certain characteristic, a certain capability, perhaps we don't have that thing for a purpose, for some wisdom that we are not aware of, that we have no idea about. So try to take this as a reminder that you have exactly what you need. Allah has given you exactly what you need per certain wisdom. And if he hasn't given you something, there is wisdom behind that too. Allah is the most wise. He's the most capable. He is the most generous. He is the most kind. Remind yourself of those qualities, inshallah. I hope, inshallah, that this was beneficial food for thought so that we can support each other, uplift each other, squash any comparison and envy we end up uh, having and so that we don't belittle the favors of Allah. Allah has given each one of us so much, so much, so much, so much favors. So let's try to recognize everything that Allah has given us. He's given each one of us unique capabilities, unique things. 
we don't each have what another person has, right? And alhamdulillah for what Allah has chosen to give us. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Let's remain grateful to Allah so that we do not belittle his favors. I hope that you found this beneficial. Until next time, assalamu alaikum.